Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Manipata. Yeah. Yeah. So my name is Zainab Motoni. Um, Zainab is just a name. I'm not a Muslim. Um, I was given after my mom's favorite student, I think. <laughs> yeah. So I am a. Sorry, with your permission, please. Uh, sorry, the speaker, with your permission. And Patricia, and okay. Linda. can mm -hmm. I request so that some of us don't even know some of us by face? Yeah, if possible, come Leo Tunaiza Onyesha Surai to talk that. If we can show our faces, if possible. Uh, some dream. <laughs> I would love to, but I'm not in a very in a private place. That is, I'm in Kokonyawatu. I sure will in the next meeting. Okay. Is that okay? All right. Yeah, so um, I wrote something and Gabriel is sharing it. Yes, I've actually shared. So I don't know if you'd want someone else to read or would you read it yourself? <laughs> yeah, I'd be glad. <laughs> if someone else can read it. Eh? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. So anyone who is feeling inspired and ready to read this? <laughs> Hello. Yes, Ian, go ahead. <laughs> okay. You Saturday. My name, not mm -hmm. me, Zainab. <laughs> My name is Zainab Mudoni. I'm not a Muslim as many people perceive. Zainab is just a name I was given by my mother after one of her people's. My love for reading and writing was born out of my father's love for reading. He handed it down literally by reading stories to me from an early age. Majorly, it was stories from the Young Nation story segment he read, which he will translate into Kamba as I could not understand English. So the more I read, the more I fell in love with English as a language and with stories. I remember being fascinated as a child when I received books. Child when I received books. I had a favorite aunt had only because. Hello. Yes, Hello? proceed. Yes, okay. Ian. Proceed, Ian. Okay. I had a favorite aunt only because she bought me books. Somehow, my reading culture was fanned by virtue of my parents being teachers, as they would bring home storybooks borrowed from their respective schools. Writing is partly carved out of reading, I suppose. That's how my love for writing was born. Also, it was because I had stories in my head that screamed to be let out. I hope to be bold enough to write stories, to be the voice of those who cannot speak for themselves, to be as honest as I can be with my own story. My writing is shaped by real events that happen in my life and by what I observe from those around me. Mostly, they voice out a struggle, bringing to light the challenges many face in private. And I hope to write more on that. The things most people will never talk about, the skeletons hidden in our closets. Being an envelo environmentalist, I will I will also love to write children's stories on environmental conservation to equip young ones with knowledge, skills, and challenge them to take full responsibility for the environment. I am glad to be part of this. And as I have learned so much that I will not have had being on my own. The challenge to strive for discretion in my writing has been unsettling for me. I'm uncomfortable with where I am right now as a writer and only want to be better. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, point of correction, I meant the challenge to strive for distinction, not discretion. <laughs> yeah, so I think you have known a little about me from what um, Ian has read. Um, but what I'd love to say more is um, my writing hasn't been really like a smooth journey or linear. I have been like a one hit wonder sort of a writer. <laughs> yeah, like I write and then I go silent for a long while and then come back again with a story. So being part of this program has really helped me to actually be serious about my writing. Um, when I was writing in primary school, it was majorly because um, of the compositions, which I really used to do well, even in high school. I remember writing a story in high school and one of my classmates was uh, like, a... 
Can you hear me? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. So one of my classmates was like, "Did you get this from a newspaper?" And I thought, "Oh wow, that was so impressive." Yes. Yeah. So I think it's the little comments from people that really help me. And in 2017, I think when I met Gabriel, he was really encouraging. Um, but then after meeting him, with the way, Gabriel, you, you really are gifted in helping people um, tap their abilities. That is a very good um, quality that you have. Yeah, so after we met, I started writing again with the help of um, an editor. She was called Joy. Joy was really helping me to edit my stories. And then she left Writers Guild. And then I got into environmental stuff and then I sort of stopped writing. Yeah, so till um, I think last year when I approached um, a standard media editor to have my article published and she liked it. So she published it on, on the Eve Woman's online, online uh, lounge. And uh, it was encouraging for me. And also I could not believe, I didn't believe that they could actually love my story. Yeah, so it was a motivation. And so when the program came, the Write Your Passion program, I was inspired to join, um, just to like hone my abilities and skills and to like have um, a good ground for my writing. I used to blog at zinintravel.wordpress.com. If you link into that address, you'll read some of my stories. Some are so bad, <laughs> but it's okay. You can just still uh, link in and read and comment, yeah. But then I stopped because I forgot my password. So if there, there's anyone who's good with the technicalities of our website, you can help me with that. Because I tried with a person who helped me set it up and we could not like find a way of hacking it or something. And I didn't want to like have another blog yeah, so I would like to be helped with that. Um, yeah, I don't think that there's something else I've not mentioned about my writing. I don't have as many accomplishments. <laughs> yeah, but um, I, I think it, it's like um, I'm just starting. Yeah. Anyone with any questions? Thank you so much, Zainab. And you would okay, love to you. know Joy was you're going to, to be an incubator, and Joy is going to be in the same incubate group with you. And she graduated mm -hmm. from the last class of Write Your Passion. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. You people are going to be in one of the incubate group and you're going to share as much, and you'll also have the fireplace um uh, meetings together. Oh, so wow. <laughs> um, if, if you have any about the blogging, uh, please check. Um, wait, wait, wait. Oh, about the blogging, uh, your blog having a problem. Um, please, please just like WhatsApp me. I'll try to talk to some few people and see if they can help you. Of course, the people mm -hmm. in, within the Writers Guild. So I'll just try to talk to them and see if they can help you. And Thank if they so might much. know what the problem is, they'll advise. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, if you have any question for Zainab, please post it over here. Uh, because of time, I'm going to move to Cherop Maritim. We need Cherop Maritim. Since she's my village mate, um, yeah, she's welcome. Uh, hi, everyone. I am having challenges with my network when you're in Nandi Hills. Uh, Japan Mgima, but uh, I hope I will not disappear in between the, the, the conversation. So uh, I wanted to make a comment when Phoebe, Phoebe Ann was, uh, Phoebe Ann was uh, speaking, I just remembered where, what happened to my Kiswahili. <laughs> I used to promote Kiswahili when I was in high school and uh, get good grades, but right now I don't know why I cannot put or uh, put even a, a sentence in Kiswahili. That's why I was wondering, wow, hey, that's really good. You make it sound, uh, you make the make Swahili sound so interesting. Like, what happened to me? That's uh, that's what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. 
don't worry i will revive you so for you. me writing sorry i cannot put my uh, i don't know I, I cannot uh, put my video currently i'm still at work uh, i apologize but i hope by next week i'll be in a place where i'll be able to share my video uh so my for me i stumbled into writing i uh, used i i i used to be very conservative and an introvert if i may say that so i would just talk to my father when i when i went when i started primary school so most of the conversations would have we would be like you need to try this crosswords in this uh, nation the gazettes and also the young nation as zainab has also mentioned so for me it started there i would just share my stories what happened in school and everything so until one day uh, i think my father had traveled a bit and i didn't have like anyone to talk to my mother at that time was so busy so i i had a notebook that's when i started that's why i say i stumbled into writing i started writing what uh journaling actually journaling i started that there i started writing my stories uh, what happened at school what happened to me how i felt and everything uh that is where i started for me then after that i i went to in, i i continued with that writing but i was not so much of course we did composition but for me it's really still used to take the lead so i'm still questioning myself uh but <laughs> i would still write uh, in english but uh then we went to high school of course we those still those writing but for me i became more into writing and writing when i started also reading books uh, remember when i was i think 10 years i started i read a book by chinu achebe a man of the people i had no idea what the story was about but it was just interesting how the wordings had been put uh, so i just read that book but i think i'm rereading it right now so that i get the whole context of what i read at when i was 10 years then uh, when i went to high school there was not much but i used, i know i used to write so much so many reports i don't know i think it's because of my handwriting also so people tend to like tell me even at my workplace currently that i check the minutes i check the notes i check the reports and everything because of the way i write and it uh, though it has really grown me uh though i get i got most of this for so from how my father uh, nurtured me in terms of the writing he used to write some of the uh, but he never got published he was so busy with work uh, so if you ever say that you want to be a writer that's uh, one of the things your parents would question i think until then for those who know who have parents like that Uh, so i have studied economics that's why i asked uh, gabriel a question on economics when you want to transit so transition uh to a different uh, place so for me i have studied economics i'm good i love i enjoy i enjoy numbers i enjoy uh anal- analyzing things uh, i think i observe too much i analyze a bit uh, too much it can get it too much that's what i have been doing um mm. and also enjoy traveling of course uh, just getting to know other people and making new friends so that that has been the journey for me i remember last year i was at a conference where i met most of the writers it was a gig economics by i think it was i was invited by a friend it was under strathmo so there i met a few friends who have been writing and a few mentors who have been mentoring me also in the writing space i have sent some of my because uh, i get good feedback and i i really enjoy feedback uh from people uh so one of the things that uh has been good for me has been just the, the writing the consistency it has just been the one that i'm still working on i i have Uh, yeah that's basic um, but i have not it a bit uh, it was not something i am good at i i tend to do most most of the research and i prefer non fiction uh, most of the time i think i have been inclined to that and i yeah basically that has been my story 
except the fact that oh yeah I, I, I have a tendency to write to to write uh, poetry I don't know why I enjoy poetry so much I have I was at a, at a, two mentorship programs and I wrote for them when I was with Jana Redoded to Western and when I wrote they were surprised that I was I, at that time you know someone cannot understand you doing so much into economics and you're trying to write so sometimes it can be challenging explaining to people that you also write. Yeah, I think I'm done, uh, Patricia. Thank you so much, Cherop. Um, also, I would want to say something. Cherop has been, all the time she reaches out to me with some of the articles and she would ask me to look into them. So she's making also that extra effort, not just the class articles only. She's reaching out with other articles that she needs help with. Like there's the one I'm editing, uh, the one of the, the pregnancy in Kenya. Um, so thank you so much, Cherop. That was wonderful. Keep writing and keep writing. Should you have any question for Cherop, uh, economist who write, you can still uh, uh, it in the comment section and then she writes and Teropa, I hope you'll be able to write stories about the Nandi Hills, the tea, the tea plantation, the our Murisik, write about it, everything, the our uh, pre-weddings, how much we put so much into that, the picking of the cows and everything. Please write <laughs> everything that. so that we can now <laughs> tell our story in a, in a different category. So thank you so much. Should you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section. And uh, I'll welcome Mary to take the floor now. Thank you, Patricia. Just allow me to plug in my earphones, sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I hope everyone is doing well. My name is Mary Ombongi. Um, yeah, and I've been so inspired by the stories I've had. Um, it's just so inspiring. And, and one thing that I've noticed is the fact that many people uh, were inspired by their fathers to write. And so I'm going to give my presentation in three, in three parts. Uh, the past, the past, the present, and the future. So the past, um, I, I am a firstborn in a family of five, and um, the person who follows me is like seven years behind. So I, I, I grew up sort of as a lone child, and I was raised by my father most of the time because I went to boarding school at around the age of um, 10 or so. No, 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 not 10. When I was in class six. So the only the only people I used to spend time with were the writers in, in newspapers. And I really fell in love with, um, with the nation back in the day, uh, Daily Nation. And I'm really glad to see that they are coming back to that kind of writing I've been I think they did uh, a sort of uh, revamping their pep, their newspaper. And uh, so I grew up reading newspapers, reading books, like I'm just that nerd reading, reading, reading. And that was my main, um, my main way in which I spent my time. And also my dad, he, he's an administrator in the public service, but I understand that he was meant to be a Kiswahili teacher. And so when I had Fibian talking so much about Swahili, I was like, wow, if my dad was here, this is probably the kind of daughter he would have wanted me to be. Cause you know, he was always correcting us, you know, uh, is it called tenses? You know, uh, when we speak in the house. So he, he was meant to be a Swahili teacher. I'm so inspired, Fibian. <laughs> To, to hear about your love for Swahili, it's honestly, I, I know everyone here would agree. Yeah. And I was also just telling some Jim that he should also pursue his Swahili because he has a very good voice as well. <laughs> so some Jim should consider that. So the past, so yeah, I I, I wrote a few poems in, in class, class eight. I remember it's the first time I ever wrote anything. 
Um, and then when I went to high school, I also wrote a poem that was presented in, you know, the um, the drama. Is it called drama? The what is it called? The competitions. The competitions that usually start from from like a district level, going all the way up. Yeah, but then I, I got into engineer. I got into engineering, so I am a, a network engineer by profession at the moment. That's what I do as my as my day job, and sort of going into that space um, made me lag a bit in terms of my writing. I didn't really know the place that writing had in my life or something, but it's something I always valued um, in terms of it being a way of expression. And that brings us to the present. So my reason for joining this class was because I don't have a structure for writing, you know. I don't have, I don't know what place it, it takes in my in my life. But one thing I know is that I want to, to professionalize it. So I kind of want to, to, to get serious about it. Uh, and that is why I joined this class, um, because I want to, pro to, to to learn how to take it seriously. I, I want to know how to give it structure. And I think I really loved what Dr. Tom Odiambo was talking about, because he even mentioned something to do with uh, a work schedule. So it means the same way I give importance and I give structure to my career and you know, I know I need to do this certification um, because I'm in IT. I know I need I need to learn something new or I know how to work or I know I need to wake up at this time. I don't have that seriousness with my writing. And that is the main reason why I joined. But another weakness that I have is that I don't work well without supervision. And, <laughs> you know, you can never say that in an interview. But yeah, I, ha I mean, it's just self-awareness. If you leave me alone, I'll just think and think and, you know, write when I want or write when I feel like I'll never really produce anything tangible. And that is why I think I'll make this request with uh, Patricia and Gabriel later, whether they can be my accountability partners for, for a project I might do perhaps in the next one year or so. So the future for me, the future for me is is bright, I guess, because I'm here right now and I'm interacting with, with all these people who are very inspiring, like from young people like uh, like Felix and uh, Njoki to, to others who are more experienced. I think it's very inspiring. And I just want to thank uh, Gabriel Dinda, your, your second name is hard to mention, and Patricia for committing yourself to this cause because I think great things happen when people come together and we are not necessary we don't necessarily learn by reading we learn by experiences like I feel like when you're in a room and you learn about other people's experiences it can be inspiring it can unlock um, things in you that you didn't know you had or you didn't you didn't know how to pursue exactly so yeah, I think community is really important. And for anyone here who ever wants to do anything and anything at all, even if you're curious about um, IT or, or um, I mean, publishing or anything, I think the first thing for you to do is, is not to Google so much, you know, how to be an auditor or how to be this and this or how to be a poet, but to actually get into a group of poets that is the, the best and fastest way to learn. So kudos, uh, Patricia and Gabriel, for the initiative. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. Eh? You, you mentioned something to do with accountability, and we have a very simple way of doing it. Jasper knows this, because we've done it a bit with him. Eh? So we agree that how many words do you want to write per day? Let's say you say 500. Then we say, every time you fail to write 500 words, you send Writers Guild 500 shillings. So, <laughs> um, then, <laughs> so if, if you promise that you'll write uh, 1,000 
and then you you don't uh, you don't write it so you translate it to money said that words are precious so we have to put currency to words eh? so i'm very we will we'll, you will discuss with patricia how we'll do this but i will be very happy to work with you to write more <laughs> thank you a lot thanks a lot gabriel karibu sana okay so, so um, yes sorry. patricia as Ian Ingara is preparing, uh, Mary, I'm not so sure if you have a blog. Um, if you don't have a blog, I might need you to have one. And then um, also you write to me in the comment section this question that I'm asking. Uh, you are a very, you are an IT person, technology people. Are you going to pursue writing in the technology because you can write the technology, you can give knowledge in the technology field, or what are you going for? Okay, just uh, allow me. Oh, sorry. Do you want me to answer now? Or? Well, you can answer now as Ian is preparing. All right. So um, I, I used to have a blog, but it's no longer active. I'm looking, I'm looking more to write... Um, like a book now. Okay. So the kind of um, help that I need is guidance. It, okay. It's accountability. It's an, you know, so that I, I don't just say, oh, I want to write a book and then like, I'll not do it um, just because of time and so on. So my, that is where I want to go. Like I want to, to maybe submit like um, chapters or manuscripts or an outline uh, because um, that is the direction I'd like my writing to take. Uh, regarding IT, so the thing is, I think I'm, I, I am leading some two parallel lives because um, my experience in, in engineering is not so much who I, it, it doesn't, I am interested in people. And so I will write about people in IT or or what it means, perhaps I can write about a lady working in IT. Okay, perfect, perfect. Because I, I am one. I have, I have met them. Yeah, exactly. All right, all right. We're looking forward to see what you'll do and with the goals you'll put in place, of which they're the goals you set by yourself, and yeah, working towards that goal. It's going to be a very interesting journey. We'll talk <laughs> about it after a year. Very interesting one. In fact, the class begins after graduation. That's when right. Write Your Passion class begins. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Patricia. You're welcome. So, Ian, Ian, if you have any questions for Mary, please write them in the comment section and she's going to see them and answer them. Ian Ingara, floor is yours. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, Amia Ningara, a uh, laboratory technologist by profession, a writer by passion, and uh, my writing journey is not really a journey but an adventure. I'll go way back in primary, then uh, walk slowly with you up to where I am currently. Uh -huh. So I think I started writing uh, or grew an interest in writing back in uh, class four. That was the first time I wrote a composition. It was really a practical hands-on experience whereby the teacher told us what to do to the last detail and we were just to copy and add our own details. But then after that, uh, I went more into reading and even become, uh, became a rebellion for the primary school whereby the books that were handed over by the government, some of the story books, some of the short uh, novels uh, bought by the school were always passing through my hands, both Swahili and English, which made me have an upper hand where I read the books before anyone else. So if, uh, by the year, I think uh, 2006 to 2009, I am pretty sure I had managed to read all the storybooks in our primary school. And then came high school, uh, an era of pace setters, 
whereby we will read story books even during the class just to keep up with the urge to finish the story and then get to another one, to another one. And uh, I managed to get to high school without much of a pass. Kiswahili as a language wasn't my strong uh, point, but uh, I would really talk uh, or pray fluently in Kiswahili, though the writing part was a little bit difficult. And then came university. I joined the Technical University of Kenya, Nyapoli in Nairobi, the city center. Sorry for that. And uh, as I was pursuing the my my doing my bachelor's during uh, my first long holiday that was back in 2015, uh, I went home for three months. And that's when I occupied my night time. You know, in university, having acquired a smartphone meant that I would sleep at least uh, either late into the night and wake up early or late in the morning. So to occupy that uh, lost chance at home where the network is poor, you are no longer able to chat with your friends, everybody is occupied with this on work. I got myself into writing, and I write, I think, my first novel around 60,000 words, though it has never seen the light. It has only been read by two or four people. And then uh, as I had finished writing the book, we came back for the second year. And uh, the urge to publish, you know, like uh, you've been reading novels, you've been reading storybooks, you always in touch with books, the hard, uh, hard copy ones, and you feel like you can be published. This is, it feels like a destiny or something that you two can do. So in the moment or in the passion of uh, wanting to be published, I tried and Googled uh, writing groups or writing, um, yeah, writing groups in Kenya, and then writers did pop up. I went to, the, uh, to, the, to my first the culture in uh, the National Museum. Uh, it's a small room uh, within the museum. I had an interaction with writers, passionate people, interesting people. We had a very wonderful session. It even pushed me to write more. That day, I remember I carried a part, a part a, I think, a page of my story. And by chance, Wafula Lucas was, was a, a guest in the session. So when he was done, I gave him a, just a part of it to go through. He read the first uh, three paragraphs. You know, when you're waiting for the feedback, you're like, OK, it's like uh, waiting for a HIV test results. You don't know what you are going to get. You don't know what you are going to be told. So as I waited patiently for him to finish, I observed this special expression. The first sentence, okay, it was perfect. You could not read anything out of his face. As he went on, he cringed a bit, smiled, and even uh, made a chuckle. And then uh, I lifted this face from the book and uh, gave him back the book. Took a minute and then told me this is a perfect story. The only thing that you need to work on is showing. Do not tell us. Do not tell us that uh, he was sweating. Show us that he was sweating. Give uh, life, breathe life into your characters. Let them live their life. Don't tell people they are living. No. Show people this living. These characters are living. Yeah, it was an insightful uh, feedback, but then again, I was still grasping the whole uh, writing concept. So you're like, okay, if I'm to make these characters live, these are big words, how am I going to make them live? They're just uh, names in my stories, like Musa is a brother to Mary. How am I going to make them live? But uh, as I went on uh, attending more pictures, I even attended several uh, book launch, book launches, 
which even pushed me more to want to publish. And then as uh, I grew into getting uh, or grew into a niche, I came to fell in love with short stories, you know, where you can just write a 4,000 uh, word story in one sitting or some six to four to six hours, or even more than uh, 4,000 or 1,000 the variation wise. And uh, that gave me the, created me to the person I am today. Uh, back in 2018, I started my blog, uh, the pencil of C uh, Didn't post anything for almost uh, six months. Fear of being judged or fear of not being read. You don't know, this is just a site. You don't know how it's going to perform. You don't know what people are going to to read from your blog, how are they going to react? So I think uh, during those six months, I managed to really grow. And then after that, I made it uh, a post, even if it's not uh, once a month, but at least twice a month. So by weekly. And I think, uh, I will. Since I started posting, the feedback is great. People are reading the stories, people are getting back, people are commenting, they are encouraging, some of them are correcting. And uh, one thing that I've come to learn uh, during this whole engagement, during this whole adventure, is that uh, as writers, no matter how good the feedback is from those around you, always look forward to work. Person who is ready to criticize you. They will tell you something wrong about your writing to your face. Even if you do not take it or even if you do not believe it, somehow it will manifest into your writing better. It's like uh, when uh, you dress in a certain way, maybe you've uh, color clashed your uh, clothing. And then a person just points out uh, blue and uh, indigo don't go together. And it means to change that. You can be obstinate and don't change. But during the day, if you know you will just be, you know, be comfortable. You feel like, okay, I'm going to change this. You don't go together. That's the same way as uh, constructive criticism is. Even if you don't accept it, it will grow into you. It will come to change what you're supposed to change, even if it's not now, but at least later. Then uh, for the future, I have a compilation of short stories that I'm looking forward to publishing, though uh, still uh, weighing out my options, still uh, looking uh, forward to more pieces of advice on how to go about it. But I'm pretty sure in a year or one and a half years, I'll be published. Thank you. And that's my adventure as for now. I'll drop a link to my blog. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ian. Uh, if you have any questions for Ian, you can just write it here. Uh, Ian, how far is, are you now, how consistent are you with your blog now? You can just also answer me uh, in the comment section. Any other question for Ian, you can put it here. And the next person is Jasper Kumo. Welcome, Jasper. Yeah, um, thank you so much, Patricia, for the chance to share. Okay, so I'm going to start with my, my blog. Um, I'll talk about it later on uh, as we go along the presentation. Yeah, so my name is Jasper Kumo. Um, I was born in Mombasa uh, way back in the 90s and uh, growing up I was used to Swahili my Swahili was so good 
until I was taken to the countryside. Um, they taught me uh, Luo language there, and that's when my lingo kind of got disrupted. Um, so first track, um, I my first encounter with writing was when I was in primary school. Uh, my teacher of English, uh, Madam Evans, she used to really encourage me, uh, you know, in terms of writing compositions. She used to say I, I used to have a very good, um, you know, imagination, composition and all that. Uh, but the only problem I had um, was with my writing. I really had a very terrible handwriting, uh, but then my stories were really good. So moving swiftly to high school, um, there's this production called Jijo 4 production. Uh, they usually came to our school to present, you know, books and all this. And there's this particular book called The Merchant of Venice. Um, I was really excited by how they acted, uh, you know, the book and everything. And that kind of elicited my, um, you know, my thoughts. And they started uh, writing poems because we are in a mixed school. I used to write like, you know, poems for my crushes. I used to crush on some girls there. And then they used to read my poems and they were so happy with it. Um, and that kind of went on and on until I, I was in trouble uh, for writing a letter and I almost got kicked out of school. So I said, well, if writing cost me, <laughs> was going to cost me an expulsion, then I would just stop it. Um, and then later on in high in uh, so after high school, I went to college. Um, I went to JQuat. Uh, that's where I started pursuing my career in IT. Um, and then in between school, uh, my friends decided to, uh, my friend and I decided to uh, create a company, which still runs today. It's called Roby Search Limited. So in the company, I was the CEO and I was again introduced to writing, but this time I was more into technical writing because I used to write documentations for softwares and all these things. Um, and that kind of helped me to get back to my, my writing as well. And then I, I later on got an opportunity to come to the United States. And when I came to the United States, um, I was lucky enough to get a scholarship. And, you know, when I was in my scholarship, they gave me a chance to speak in front of, you know, the whole national TV. And um, that's when I realized that, you know, we Africans have our stories, but then instead of writing our stories, we let other people write our stories for us. So basically, America was not really taking advantage, but they were trying to tell my story through their platforms. And, you know, when I thought of it, I was like, why can't I just create my own website? And instead of airing my stories on TV or in other very funny websites, I can have my own blog, uh, kind of share my, uh, you know, my passions and everything. And as soon as I, I finished giving my speech, I just decided to go and start a blog. I didn't know what I was going to write. I didn't know what I was going to put up there. And even up to today, I'm still struggling <laughs> on what I should, I should actually write there because I have a lot of personal stories. I have a lot of, um, you know, encouraging stories for um, African immigrants. Um, but then I just don't know where to start. So. I just decided to start a blog. I had a passion for, I realized that I had a passion for photography and I wanted to kind of um, share stories through the pictures that I took. At the same time, I wanted to write stories about immigrants who've been in the US and they've been successful. So kind of interview them and, and look at how life has been for them, uh, look at the accomplishments they've made and kind of use my platform as a way to encourage any African who's, who's aspiring to come to the US or even to other countries on how they can maneuver through this, you know, um, tough economy and everything else. So yeah, uh, my blog is, is up, my website is up. I am very passionate about photography. At the same time, I'm also planning to just start conducting interviews with people who've been here for, for many years and share their stories as well as my story 
uh, just to give hope to every person that you know um, everything is possible. Uh, so currently I work, uh, I'm in IT, I work for the bank and um, a part of that environment has taught me to be very resilient. You know, uh, the work culture in the US is quite different. Uh, people do things differently. And um, as I connect to our African friends, I also want a way to connect the, the people who live here just to understand why they do things the way they do it. Um, and also just get into the culture and immerse myself and share my thoughts and my dreams to everyone. Yeah, so that will be my story. And yeah, so that's it. If you have any thoughts, if you, if you have any uh, you know, questions, if there are things that you want me to improve on the website, uh, I, I would highly welcome all those suggestions as I start my, uh, my writing journey. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jasper. Uh, your blog is something else. Wow. I'm here, you know, uh, you judge a book by its cover. I'm that kind of person. So here, eh, I think you're right. You do right. Well, I don't think. I believe you do right. But you can, you can do more than this. Your blog exactly, it's spiced up. Now it's up to you. This is good work. This is really good work. Continue telling the stories. And um, should you have any question for Jasper, you can just write in the comment section. Gabriel has shared the, the blog. You guys can look at it later on. And if you have a blog, can you just also share it here so that we can look at it and read? Patricia, did we lose you? I think um, you are unmuted. You are muted, so you could unmute. Uh, okay, okay. I was just uh, um, saying, if you have any comment, please put it in the co um, comment section. You can ask any question to Jasper, like how he manages to wake up in the middle of the night and attend classes, which some of us will not do. Uh, and what he's planning, uh, Jasper, you can also, answer this question for me what you're planning what is your plan when it comes to writing do you write from your field or you're just writing stories from your experience so for now i'm writing stories from my experience because that that's what hits home to everyone um but then later on i'll i'll dive into the technical aspect but for now i just want to introduce myself to people and just create that network with everyone before um, I can go into my uh, technical writing. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, the next person was who? It could be somebody, Emily. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon, Emily. I want to believe that you can hear me right loud and clear. Kindly allow me to share the what I have, or maybe I can read through it. Is it possible to share screen, Patricia? It's disabled. Yes, you can. You can. No possible. Oh, okay, thank you. So uh, I am a teacher by profession. I teach at Sukari Presbyterian. I'm also a student at Kenyatta University pursuing my bachelor's of art in education, Kiswahili and Siari. But I do write in both languages. Maybe I'm, I'm one confused writer because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, people tell me, you, you just settle on what you can do best. You have to decide whether you, you write best in Kiswahili or in English, but I'm yet to I'm yet to decide whether to keep writing in both languages or to stick to one. So uh, let me just allow me read. I'll be very fast. 
I began writing while in primary school. To date, my father buys newspapers on a daily basis. When I was young, I would read the children's section of the Sunday Nation called Young Nation, and I yearned to write as well as the children who used to write those stories in the newspaper. I remember with nostalgia submitting a story to the Sunday Nation while in class three, but the story was never published. However, I was not deterred, so I continued write, reading and writing. When my teachers introduced composition and insha writing in class four, I got so fascinated. Their mode of delivery was really exciting. My English teacher used to find all sorts of expressions, bring them to class, read them out, then teach us how to use them in our compositions. Since I'd been writing earlier, I always looked forward to writing the teacher's compositions. Uh, my compositions were always ranked the best and read in front of the class. That got me more psyched up and motivated. I wrote and wrote. Actually, after completing my Kenya certificate of primary education, both my English and Kiswahili teacher request, teachers requested I leave them my composition and Insha books to use as a reference material for te teaching Insha and composition. While still in primary school, I would read my cousin's set books like Aminata, which I read while in class six and many more. In high school, I was always charged with the responsibility of, responsibility of writing projects for instance, science project. I always stood out in writing articles and compositions, which earned me the responsibility of a library prefect. When it came to analyzing the set books, both in high school and college, my teachers and classmates were amazed. I wanted to pursue journalism or law, but then my father chose teaching for me. I was hesitant to do teaching, but my mother encouraged me to do the teaching course. Then later on, I would pursue the career of my choice. So I proceeded to Moranga Teachers College. For some strange reason, I haven't changed my career as I am still pursuing Bachelor of Education in KU. Last year, I took writing more seriously after I was given a job to write grade four English book. I was referred to a publisher by Mr. Merechu Mutahi. That boosted my confidence and began, and so I began writing novellas. During the Corona period, a friend saw Kenyanjui Kombani's post on Facebook asking for a group to work with him in his pursuit of consistency. I joined the accountability WhatsApp group and that I saw me write a lot. In July alone, I wrote over 50,000 words. I, saw, I also joined Writers Guild in June after requesting Kenyanji Kombani to read my book. Due to his busy schedule, he introduced me to Gabriel. I'm just, I've decided to cut the long story short. So, so far I've, uh, I've been published in three anthologies and thanks to Writers Guild because the person who introduced me to the group of others that we've been published with was uh, someone I met in Writers Guild called Usain Kasim. So together with Usain Kasim, we have written Shaka Ya Maisha. It's a short story anthology in Kiswahili. We have also written Shairis for different diseases called Diwani Ya Maradhi, although I'm not a poet and I really struggled to write Shairis. Actually, I can't brag about that book. Sorry, to, to, sorry for that confession. I'm not a poet, although I did write and they accepted the Shairis and they have been published. And also, I recently wrote, um, took part in the writing of a children anthology called Kukwa Meshinda Kura. I'll be displaying the photos shortly. I'm sorry I forgot to carry the books to where I am. I would have displayed because I have copies. And then I also, last year in 2019, towards the end of the year, I submitted two storybooks at KLB. The books were accepted by the editor, although up to date, they have not yet been published. I have a novella entitled The Tyrant, which is being edited. So that is my writing journey. Uh, I've talked about, 
I've talked about last year being involved in, uh, in the writing of, uh, of a grade four book, but funnily, this book never got to KICD. So uh, uh, let, let me just show you uh, uh, the, an idea of what the book looked like because they designed the book. The book was designed, but we never understood why the book was never got to KICD. So for, for a curriculum book to be accepted and for it to go to the market, it has to be first reviewed uh, by KICD. So this book, you can see it was a nice book because it had reached that stage of being um, of being designed. You can see that, that this is a book we wrote with uh, two other people. But this book, I think it will it will end nowhere because it never got to KICD. So this is one of the things that I did, and um, this book, this book is one of the things that got my confidence higher. And this is when I believe that for sure I can write. After I got involved in the writing of this book, so this is one. I have the other books that have been that have been published. Give me a minute, I ju I'll just display the photos and then I, I can maybe uh, leave the, the chance for the next person to, to give their journey. So, um, I don't know. Sorry, maybe uh, someone else can continue then afterwards, I'll display the, the pictures or the cover pages of the books that have been published in. Thank you very much for the chance. Yeah, I'll, I'll display the photos in a short while. Let me open the folders as someone else continues. Patricia, I'm done. Thank you so much, Emily. Looks like you've done a lot, and um, somehow you see most of most. It, it's interesting to see almost most of you left your books at school for references. Your composition book. Somebody like me, if I left, nobody would even understand anything because of my handwriting. Thank goodness for the keyboards now. Nobody judges me for my handwriting. But it's good to know you've written so many books, but this shouldn't be the end of it. We want to see more. We want to see a book, write your class passion. After the writing of class passion, we still want to see another book that maybe will uh, you get inspiration from all these people in the class, and then you write another book. Yes, so actually, should you have uh, any question for Emily? Um, I, I have a comment. Uh, I have a comment for Amy. Yes. Like I've, I've always admired your your ways, uh, your way of expression. I think it's very simple. It's really you are you're meant to be a teacher. Um, it's it's good. So that's very admirable. Uh, that's for you, Emily. Not for me. For me, if I become a teacher, I'll, it will be a disaster. <laughs> Um, Joki also have written some comment here. Uh, should you have any other question, please post it here. As we move to another Kiswahili person, Bilha Mariana. Mariana Kweyu. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, my name is Bilha Mariana Kweyu, but I prefer Mariana Kweyu. Uh, in my future books, I believe I'm going to use Mariana Kweyu and I'm a Swahili teacher by choice because I, um, in my undergraduate, I did exercise and sports science at KU. I wanted to be a nurse, but apparently I could not be a nurse because um, exercise and sports science called me to school. And during that time, I, we were three of our siblings and we were joining um, campus so it became quite difficult for my father to place us all through so one had to go to self-sponsored and another one had to go to job so i was the unfortunate one and i went to job and i was called by that course so i just did it because i did not have any option uh after finishing i'm still passionate about it but i only train myself as of now and my swahili 
writing journey. I I remember I've always known that I'm a writer since when I was young. Uh, when I was in class three in primary school, there's a story, a Swahili story I wrote. And uh, after the teacher went through it, he marked it and uh, he gave me a 20 out of 40. But deep uh, at the end of the, of the insha, he wrote Wongo. So it really, it was so fascinating and I laughed so much about it because I mean, I was writing just a story, but how did you know? Okay, it didn't make sense, but that Wongo really took me, um, it made me think about writing so much. And I was, uh, uh, I remember in class eight also, um, my composition was read in front of the whole class and I was so proud of myself. So during that time, I've always known deep within me that I can write, but discovering the whole writing process came in 2019 and 2020 uh, through Writer's Guild. I met uh, a person called Elias uh, through a language course. So I was doing German way back in 2017. So after meeting Elias, he introduced me to uh, Writer's Guild, but I never paid much attention to it because I um, I was doing a language course. And during that time, we used to have conferences. We used to have launches of books at Gote. And then afterwards, I did French at Alliance Ponces in 2018 until date. And so I never used to prioritize Writers Guild for book, book launch, but I would prioritize Alliance Ponces because I knew it was my school and it was easy to, to get the way around. But now thinking about Writers Guild and uh, Strathmore, so it really was quite far. And uh, something that I got so much inspired about writing is Mr. Kombani. Uh, Mr. Kombani, during his session, he really capitalized on social media. And really that is what I have been, I have been looking forward to. And my social medias were all dormant until when I started Writers Guild, this writing yeah. program. So I've been really strong. Um, uh, see the document. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes, 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 we can uh, hear you. Yeah, proceed. Yeah, Where have people yeah. disappeared to? <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. So, um, yeah, uh, my thoughts got lost a little bit. So, yeah, no problem. And, um, Speaking about Swahili, I I went to German school as um, the, the, the primary and the secondary school along Limur Road. So I got a job there. So I was working there as a, um, as a sports coach. I was doing, I was doing uh, PE. No, actually PE, I was doing swimming and athletics. So uh, they endorsed me. They told me now that they didn't have a Swahili teacher. How about you start teaching Swahili? So I really accepted without hesitant because I knew it was my time for me to start growing. And that is how I came up. Uh, I started doing Swahili and I started teaching Swahili. So from 2016 to 2020 until date now, I'm still teaching Swahili. And um, in terms of my development since I uh, started after COVID, yeah, after COVID, I really had a lot of time on my hands since schools were closed and I could not do anything. So I started a, I started a YouTube channel. Uh, allow me please to project, I hope uh, to share my screen. So yeah, uh, here is what I have been doing since uh, March. So I have uh, Swahili with Mariana. I only have 129 subscribers. I would really like that all of you subscribe to my YouTube channel and get and enjoy like the others. So what we do, we teach expatriates, Swahili, the beginners and intermediate groups. And those ones who are coming to Kenya as visitors only for a short time and long term. And I have over 40 videos, but very short videos. You see like three minutes, one minute. Uh, four minutes. I think the longest I have done is um, six minutes. So, yeah, this one, seven minutes. So you can just go to Swahili with Mariana and look at the videos and yeah, watch them and give me a like for every, for every video. I'll really appreciate it. And that is that. So I also um, took Mr. Kombani's advice in terms of uh, doing 
Instagram and I started my Swahili with Mariana Instagram. Look how people are waiting. There is market there. People are waiting for you to just start. If you start like this, you grow. Say, so look, I, uh, I started this in um, July, but I wasn't serious about it. So I started posting and posting and posting. And now look, I have 107 followers and 197, and I have 80, 80 posts. So people are looking are waiting for you to do things and yeah this is these are my lessons very simple i make them through my phone and uh, no one else is helping so I just look for ideas gather ideas and uh, yeah i teach people so uh that's it after being challenged from writers guild i decided to start a blog and yeah these are the statistics but before statistic let's go yeah, um, world around languages. Should you learn a new language? Yeah, this is what I asked myself way back in 2016 when I was starting to teach Swahili. And this one really encouraged me. And I did now German, but I speak a little German. But uh, for French, I'm fluent in French. And for English, of course, everyone is speaking English here in Kenya. And yeah, so this is what I've been writing. Welcome to Swahili short stories. So I'm basically a short story writer, Swahili short stories. And I really got encouraged from Fibian Motama after editing my first story. It really, it, it was like a bomb to me because she really analyzed everything. And at the end, she told me that this one is not ready for publishing. Uh, it dawned on me so hard that uh, like I was, oh my God, I really, really need to do a lot on writing. And uh, I have really encouraged myself. So I started writing 500 to a uh, uh, thousand words, at least two articles per week. And look, for the past few weeks since we started with Writers Guild, I have, uh, yes, Basi Limemkana Dereva. So I looked for a friend. I remember Patricia encouraging us to look for a person, like a, a partner to help you with editing. And I got a friend of mine who we are together working. So he's just looking at my work and trying to improve one or two things before I publish. Uh, here on uh, Mariana Kweyu WordPress. So it's free, by the way, but you can you can pay also. But for me right now, I just want to get used to writing before I upgrade to the other one. Uh, I have Basili Memkana Dereva, Gioni Akioja, Usikumoja. So I did corrected uh, my, uh, I corrected my, my um, articles and here they are. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are. Thank you so much, Fibian Mutama, for being so hard on me. Now I know I'm going to be the best in the next few times. So yeah, welcome to Sahili Short Stories and uh, the stats. See, I only have two followers for the past, what, two weeks, three weeks. Yes, two followers and what, one comment. So I normally, after writing, I take the link to um, all my my groups, my WhatsApp groups, uh, for them to read and tell me what they are. I'm really scared about someone stealing my job because I've really put sweat in it and blood in it, but they don't, even if they steal from you, they will not steal your hands and your brain. You still, you can write. So yeah, it's really, I don't have much. Look, um, yeah, he doesn't have so much. At someone from Italy is reading my article. Oh, lo, lo, oh, lo, lo. Okay, so people are watching, people are looking. And now for my page, uh, Swahili with Mariana. Yeah, that one is basically I post everywhere. And you see like here I have six people reached, but I haven't boosted anything so far. Three and here 10. So this, I mean, people are there and they are looking. And uh, I'm really quite passionate about French. So I also started with a French one and I have two accounts. I have a uh, YouTube account. I have um, yeah channel, sorry. I have a French one and um, yeah, this is quite French. I'm really bad on with French, but not so bad because I have at least a C1, C1. But due to Kwakirika um, Naluga, uh, it's not really, not so good. Yeah, but just listen to this. Yeah, 
on the beaucoup de choses, mais on a mis on s'amuse, on fait les blagues, on rire ensemble. I know it's not that clear, but I really wanted to do French Swahili. French Swahili and Swahili French, uh, omitting English on that. But well, that's it. So I have been writing also a little bit of a book because I realized that we do not have like expatriate Swahili books. And so I gave it to me, like I wanted to just get a book that really suits my students. But unfortunately I could not get a very nice book. So I decided to start writing one. And yeah, this is um, at the beginning, beginning stages. I'm still, uh, yeah, working it up. It's not yet finished, but I believe that I'm going to finish before the end of the year. Hopefully, uh, I'll take my time on it and see what I can do. And thanks to Writers Guild, I believe that they're going to help me with this worksheet. Um, yeah, uh, another thing, last thing, I'd love to read a poem. I'm still uh, working on my voice. My voice is quite horrible, but I hope you just bear with me, okay? Now, uh, this Shairi Hili, Limandi Kwana Ibrahim Hemedi, ambaye anatoka uh, ni wasema nao na yuko malindi uh, kwa hiyo um, kichwa ni kalamu haina macho uh, i'll really try to <laughs> nitajaribu kuhani but uh, yeah so um haya tazama this is a dedication to all of us for um, who those ones who are really really into writing and really want to make a difference with a pen <clears throat> Okay, um, Kalamufanya Hadari, could you a cui to me? Uachena machachari, ukiwa umen, we are Ufanya poqua kiburi, pabaya ita kutia Kalamu hai namacho na wala hai fikiri Kalamu uandi kacho lazima ita salimu chochote u. Kiwazacho ambacho utazumu Usipo kijua hicho utakujaji laumu Kalamu hai na macho na wala hai fikiri Hususan kwenye fasihi na utunzi wa mawazo Maneno ya siyo sui ya matusi na mabezo Utakalo huliwahi kalamu huwa nifunzo Kalamu hai na macho na wala hai fikiri Kalamu leo mwenzetu imemti ya pabaya Kutunga kwa kudhubutu na kuzidisha kinaya Yuwaliliwa na watu jangali memshukia Kalamu hai na macho na wala hai fikiri Kalamu ni kome hapo ni ushauri na wapa Chochote tuwa ndikapo tusiwe watu wapupa Vile vile tukanywa po tusipende kujitapa Kalamu hai na macho na wala hai fikiri Hiyo ni moja asanteni na kuna hii nyingine nilikuwa ni meandika kusu kiswahili na nitaanza Kwa jinale maulana naona leo nyambie Niteni mariana kwa kiswahili mpambe Matache leo na nena mnijue ni viumbe Kiswahili na kipenda hakika kime nilea Kuandika na kazana kwa tasini ya nitambe Niweze kuinuana na uenzangu viumbe Hakini jali ya rabana tungo zangu nizifumbe Kiswahili na kipenda hakika kime nilea 
kiburi ni na kikana sitaki kumea pembe na wenzangu na funza na unikimbie uzembe na wenza na shikamana na kukomesha pia pombe kiswahili na kipenda hakika kimenilea shukran asanteni maswali sasa Nafikiri nimesema kila kitu. I think I'm finished, yeah. I've taken my 10 minutes or more. Hey, I just have a comment. Yes. Um so I, I really appreciate uh, I've been using your your YouTube channel to teach my sister Swahili in the US and um I know sija kulipa pesa like I'll pay you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay you for the free service and just keep doing what you're doing uh, because you're impacting other lives. Uh, I know when my friends want to come to Kenya or itaji kujua Kiswahili so I definitely refer them to your YouTube channel so that way wasi wasi nini wasipote wasikuja huko. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Asante sana. Mm, jua tu lakini wakifika nyumbani ni nyumbani. Hawata hawata kuwa na shaka. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Back to you Patricia if there are no questions. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Looks like Swahili people are always smiling. Hey, I don't know if it's this Rahat Arabu or the, there is something called like that. So or whatever those songs you sing. Hey, you are always happy. You always have this energy with you that it's infectious all of us can feel it thank you so much mariana that was really good and i'm glad you actually used the edits that fibian did on your work uh, i think the two of you should have a conversation um if you have any question please please uh, you are free to, uh, to ask uh, from the comment section and then uh, mariana will be able to answer it Uh, right now I would want to introduce Gabriel again. Uh, Gabriel will um, talk to you about I know we are running out of time but Gabriel will talk briefly about Writers Guild and then the one year program that you're going to start. So up over to you Gabriel. Thank you very much Patricia. Sorry Gabriel. Yes yes. Bana samji. Have we heard from everybody? Yes. Oh, we have. The others who have done an MIA today, yeah? <laughs> like who? I thought our class has more students. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We've actually yeah. received information from Kenneth Muriuki. Mm. He said he's not mm. feeling well today. And, okay. Uh, Vanisha, Vivian, also had an emergency. Mm. So she was not able to make it. But next week, during the graduation, we'll... Uh, probably Patricia will guide us, but we'll fix time so that we can hear from them before the official ceremony starts. Gabriel. Thank you for that clarification. Mm-hmm. Gabriel, uh, Gabriel, can you hear me? Sorry. Yes. yes. Yeah. Before you continue, uh, someone had asked me on our break about this one, the class here. I think <laughs> now you in, you explain to us the meaning of it. Okay, perfect. I'm going to do that. So I'll take two minutes or less <laughs> i just take i hope to take such a short time to just tell you briefly about writers guild and if you allow me at this point i'll share the screen um, so generally writers guild is a family of writers and that is what we we wish to do uh, so there is this one link where all the information about writers guild is so I'll, I'll share it in the chat, but here you get to see our journey and milestones. So let's see where we started. Um, so Writers Guild was founded in 2014 in Kenyatta University, as I was sharing with you earlier, as a club. And the main goal of Writers Guild at the time was to grow writers, to just provide a platform where you, me, and the other person would come together. And uh, the thought was, you, you are weak, I am weak. 
but we come together, then we are strong. So you'd realize that many of our writers are the people who are starting out. You, you will find Muge Wadiongo in Writers Guild or Kinyanjui Kombani, but as a, in the capacity of a mentor, but not really a writer. So we want to grow more. So that is the main reason why Writers Guild was started as a club in 2014, and it has not changed since then. It has changed the form, how we do it, but the idea has not changed. So what are our guiding values? Uh, our guiding values are four. One is love and service to God and humanity. We believe that um, we can use writing as a tool of service, uh, a tool to be better as a person. So we always ask the questions eh, after you've written, what next? Eh? So we hope that uh, what we write can help us get closer to our God or whichever name we call, but a supreme being that we report to. Then true friendships and family. So Writers Guild, we, some people call us a company, but that is not quite. We would wish to be a home, a true home of writers. That has been our tagline for so long. So just beyond writing, we want to be a family. Yeah, we want to be with you and uh, we be with each other as a family then true growth in all that we do. So uh, we, we value growth so much that not just as a writer, but as a person. So you realize that in Writers Guild, there are many opportunities that we share and we encourage you to take part in. We would wish you that you grow as a person. You know, when you grow, let's say Jasper, when you grow in your banking career, you will probably write more and you'll be a better person. So we encourage growth in its all forms, yeah. Then, uh, you know, the spirit of trial and error. Eh? We believe that when we start at a point, let's say you, we come together and we are both weak or we are not, uh, you know, strong in an area. But if we keep at it, we keep trying, we keep exploring options, then we, we, we finally get to do something. So those are the guiding principles of Writers Guild. For key milestones of Writers Guild, I'll share this link with you so that you can check on your own and just see the journey, what happened in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, all that until 2020. So how do we help writers grow? So we help writers grow through guidance, mentorship and companionship, peer review and encouragement. Some of these things you have experienced, opportunities and sharing, um, and then events and activities that we organize where Ecclesia comes in. So Ecclesia comes from um, a word that started in ancient Greece called Ecclesia. Ecclesia is where people used to meet uh, to just discuss the issues of society. So church used to meet, people would meet to pray in people's houses. Those ones were called Ecclesia. Then in Greece, people would just meet and talk about politics, economy. And so that is what led to philosophy. And uh, civilization. So we call this writer's ecclesia to mean that a place where writers just come to meet and share and grow together. And it is an open access. Every week we have such a, a session. For ancient Greece, it, it used to be there every day. So in the evening after work, people would meet to just discuss the affairs of society. So we believe that the discussions that start at writer's ecclesia will one day go to the all corners of the world. So people will appreciate writing and reading and it will be part of us. So that is the origin and the meaning of Writer's Ecclesia. Yeah. So uh, this is how some of the ways through which we try to grow and to achieve the goal that we have of growing a true home of writers. So also we have other writing programs. What I'm looking at now is our website. We have programs like Business Writing for Smart Professionals, Teens Write, and Write Your Passion. Those are specific um, ways through which we help to grow writers. Who owns Writers Guild? Many people always ask. Um, if you could just come under us, then you go to um, um, our team. Then you come to Board of Trustees. So Writers Guild, as it was founded in Kenyatta University, it was a club, uh, a student's club. But in 2015, it was registered out there. Uh, as an organization. So uh, the chapters now remain in different universities as clubs, but Writers Guild is independent. We are semi-autonomous. 
So like the Writers Guild of Chuka is semi-autonomous. It's a branch of Writers Guild, but it's semi-autonomous. They run their own affairs and we just guide them. So we have such branches in four universities uh, at, at that now, in Chuka, in Kenyatta University, in Moi University, and in, in, in Mombasa. So we, Writers Guild, as at now, is registered as a trust. And if you are familiar with registration as a trust, trust is not owned by anyone. But for Writers Guild, we believe that it was God's idea and it remains God's. Mm? Who, so we, we only serve through it under his guidance. So it is run by a board of trustees of you know, young people, people you probably know. So there is Douglas Legedi, there is Martin Mwebia, there is uh, Brian Yagol, there is Patricia Molin Mataga, uh, and then there is Vera Bonareri and Gabriel. That is the, those are the current trustees, but they keep changing. So we do activities in trust of our writers. Then we also have a board of management, the people who help in the day-to-day -day running of Writers Guild. Uh, again, you can get their details under our team. Okay, so uh, what are we working towards after all this? What next? Our wish is to uh, grow uh, a home, a true home of writers. And uh, the home is in two forms. One, we hope to have a physical place called the Writer Center where we will put, we will have all these activities of Writers Guild together. So uh, we hope to do groundbreaking in 2025. That is the physical manifestation of the home of writers. But then we also hope to have the home of writers as an idea in everyone's heart or in everyone's mind. So in our family, we can read, we can grow writing, we can encourage the culture of reading so that we have homes where people are writing. For the next one year, there, is, there are a number of things that Patricia is going to share with you that we will do. One of them is called growth partner. So you will be asked to choose one person from this class to be your growth partner. They will be your accountability partner. So in the past we have chosen for people, but we realize that when you choose for yourself, it is better. Sometimes we advise that you can choose of someone of the same gender, but no problem if you decide to cross and choose someone from the other gender. As long as the idea of writing remains with you and you help each other grow. Then we will we will give you okay. yeah. so uh, we will give you mentees and this is informed by you know you learn more when you teach and this Bilha and Emily knows this better that when you teach you learn more so some of these things that we have learned we have many writers who are still making the mistakes we made before we learned these things so how about we share them. So Writers Guild, we have different membership categories. There is incubates. After you graduate, you become incubates. But then there are affiliates. People who are not able to join this class for one reason or another, but they would wish to take part in Writers Guild programs. So such people ask you to help mentor them so that they grow. Then we have Tunza, Tunza member, the, our mentors, the Kinyanjui Kombani, the Lucas Wafula, the Dr. Tom. Those are the Tunza members. So we are still... Uh, structuring the program so that we allocate one mentor in those. So those are our TUNSA members. And I'll also share with you a link to give you a brief of our journey to being to having TUNSA members. So that is, those are some of the details that we will share with you uh, as time goes by towards the graduation so that you can uh, have them in mind. Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah. I think that that would do for now, but generally our invitation to you is we don't want to, we don't want to be a writer's organization. We truly want to be a family. And um, we would want you to, to retain your complete freedom as a writer, write as much as you want, but just remember to carry people with you, to, to bring people along. So we mentor people, we grow people, you can take part in activities, you see like, if you have maybe a skill you can offer to teach writers on that skill, we can grow together truly as human beings and as writers. So that is our invitation to you as you join this program uh, so that we can learn together. 
once you graduate, you will join a team of former graduates of Writers Guild of this program. And you will be called an incubate of Writers Guild. And for the next one year, we will be taking part in programs and activities that we will tell you about. And we'll introduce you to the incubate representative called Julian Kirote, who will guide you on the activities that we will engage in. So I welcome you all to Writers Guild. And I ask you to, to join with a view to growing and uh, helping others grow. So Karibu Nisana Writers Guild and all the best. <laughs> yeah, so if, uh, if, if you have any question regarding Writers Guild, we'd be very happy to answer before Patricia closes this. I, I remember one time, last time when we were giving this presentation about Writers Guild, someone asked, is Writers Guild a publisher or what is it? And this is something that we need to clarify. Writers Guild, our main goal is not to publish. Our main goal is not to, you know, to compete with publishers. That is not our goal. Our goal is to grow writers that can be published anywhere. We want to focus on you as a writer, to grow you that you be such a good writer that even if you, you approach a publisher in another continent, they can listen to you. So our major goal is to publish writers, but we offer self-publishing as a service. Yeah. So we offer self-publishing as a service to writers, to specific writers, but there is a process to that, which we will take you through uh, as time goes by. So our main goal is to grow you so that you can be published anywhere, including Writers Guild, if you so qualify. Okay. So that's all from for today. So I have a question. Uh, yes. So in, re in regards to the, uh, to the accountability partners, uh, what if you know someone who was already a former student? Um, can you choose two accountability partners or you're only limited to one person? No. You, you can choose two accountability partners. We always just leave it for you. Are you able to manage? Because accountability partners work in two ways. You read them or you help them grow and they help you grow. So looking at your circumstances, are you able to handle two people? Let's say um, uh, you'd wish to have two accountability partners. If you'd wish to have an accountability partner in the previous class, we will not deny you. All of us are writers and all of us are incubates, members of Writers Guild. So you can choose that person, you just talk to them. And if they agree, we just put it in our records. Uh, but you just look at your circumstances. Actually, you will not be restricted that you have to pick from this class. Mm. So if you, if you feel comfortable with a previous graduate, no problem, you can consider that. And uh, you know, if maybe there are some challenges on the same, then Patricia will, will, will be able to handle it very well to organize to ensure that no one is, um, is shortchanged or no one feels shortchanged. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Gabriel. I don't know if you, any of you has any question um, with the... Uh, Gabriel has talked about the accountability stroke growth partners uh, because uh, we believe the theme of this year at Writers Guild is holding hands. So we believe you cannot grow as you as an individual. You need somebody else to hold your hand. You need to grow. We need to grow together as a community. And growing together means you'll have to actually talk to somebody else or somebody else to talk. So we cannot grow, I cannot grow alone. I'll grow if I have somebody, let's say Mariana helping me grow. And not just also me sitting and waiting for Mariana, no, also me helping Mariana in ways that I can. So, and that's how the growth partner comes in. The growth partner is very important. You decide on the schedule you'll work on. Once you pick your growth partner, you'll just let me know. And um, I don't know if Gabriel has told you this. Um, you're not going to graduate until you present to me your growth partner. 
So you have to make sure you give me your growth partner by Wednesday. And that's when I'll be able to actually send you the certificate. It's not tough. It's just you now, because everybody has introduced themselves today, it's you looking at uh, and approaching them and stuff like that. And you're going to figure it out. Okay. Um, apart from the growth partner, when you're, you're graduating, you have more knowledge as an incubator. Other people from the affiliate, you know, we have the, the different membership. The affiliate doesn't have the knowledge you guys have right now. They don't even know what is editing. They don't even, they're still struggling. They still don't have much confidence. So in that regards, on, the, on helping others grow and holding hands, you're going to hold hands of two people two young writers, you're going to hold their hands. You're going to share the knowledge you've earned in this class to help them grow. You'll take, that one is called mentorship. You're going to mentor, you to have two people, two mentees that you'll mentor. It's also not time consuming because you'll agree on what time. And I can only give you a maximum of two. So when I give them to you, they'll report to me and tell me how far you're going. Uh, Phibian already has one. So Phibian will only get one because Phibian already has one. So I'll, um, I'll give each, each and everybody from this class two young writers. They still don't have much confidence. So you're going to hold their hands for 15 weeks. It, it's not going to start immediately. It depends. If some people, it starts after two months. Some will start after um, um, three months. So it depends. All right. Another thing uh, that I was supposed to talk about, I think um, Patricia, just a quick question. Uh, yes. Are we getting, are we getting them from you or we can get them from um, any other place? No, it's me who will give them to you. Okay, okay. I'll give you them. I'll give the. I'll give them your name. I'll actually give you two names with their phone numbers, and I'll also tell them you have a mentor now, and the name is so and so, and then you people will start talking. Okay. Thank you. Okay, but should you need help in that regards, you're free to communicate to me. You're free to ask me how can I go about on this one because it can be a bit challenging. As I told you, they still don't have as much confidence as you have. That struggling, they even don't know which field do they go to when it comes to writing. So you are also you're going to help them develop in a way that after 15 minutes, uh, 15 weeks, you can leave them to the world and you're proud that you mentored some two people, you shared some knowledge. Any other question? If you have question about the growth partner or the one so, year Patricia, incubus, Yes. Sorry, I think I need clarification on that issue of the growth partner. You've said mm -hmm. that you will give us, uh, sorry, there's something you mentioned that before you give us or before we identify, we will not graduate. Is that the growth partner? Yeah, that's the growth partner. And you are also saying that you are the one who will uh, give us a growth partner, right? No, no, um, growth partner, oh. you're supposed to pick them by yourself. I'll only give you mentee, oh. the mentees. The and people you're supposed to mentor. Okay. Okay. So yeah. are these growth partners, are they part of our class? You can pick a growth partner. You can pick from this class. Mm -hmm. Um, but there is uh from the last class, everybody is gone. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a growth partner from the last class. I can only give you names from the other class. 
which is last class. The February and class, is, and then you can be able to pick. But you can start picking from this class and talking to people from this class because now you understand oh. each other properly. Okay. All right. Okay, fine. Anybody has any question? Patricia, you yes. can hear me? Yes. I have a question too. Yeah, thanks for that clarification. I didn't get <laughs> the mentee and the growth partner. So the growth, uh, the growth partner, um, mm -hmm. must we pick them from this class or we can have uh, uh, some people from elsewhere? So the, main, the growth partner has to be from a mm -hmm. class that graduated at Writers Guild. You're not oh, okay. going to pick somebody outside of Writers Guild and you're not going to pick an affiliate. Incubates, you have more knowledge. You've just graduated. You have more knowledge than affiliates. Affiliates are still struggling. They're writing here, there, there, there. They don't even know what they want to do in regards to writing. You guys have established yourselves. You have so much knowledge. So you cannot pick an affiliate. You can only pick an incubate, somebody who graduated. When you graduate, you become an incubate. Okay. So the next stage you pick people will move to will be the Tunza. After some time, you people will be now the Tunza members. You'll join the, the Kina Kinyanjui and staff in the future, and then you'll be the Tunza members. So you, you should look at this class. People have introduced themselves today. Who do you want to partner with? Who do you feel like will hold you accountable? People who, are see, who you feel like, I'm, I'm very sure this one is so serious, if I work with this one, I'm going to grow in this manner and it will be consistent. Now there is also the accountability report. Now that one has nothing to do with the growth partner. I told you the class begins after you graduate. That's when your class will actually begin. That's there is a template I'm going to send to all of you when you graduate with information that can help you, the groups in Facebook that can help you, some of the books you should read. After that, you're going to actually fill a template and send it to me saying, how many words will you be writing? And at how, in what period will it be weekly? Will it be monthly? Will it be after two weeks? If you fail, if you, for example, you plead, you've said, I'm going to write 500 words weekly. And then you don't write those 500 words in that week. You'll be sending 500 Kenyan shillings to Writers Guild. If you said you're going to write a thousand words after two weeks, then you fail to do that. Two weeks elapsed, I've not seen any 1,000 words anywhere. You are supposed to pay 1,000 shillings to Writers Guild. So as you fill that accountability template, I want you to sit down, create time. If you're going to pledge, you, you're going to tell me, Patricia, I'm going to write 5,000 words. Please be ready to write those 5,000 words because I'll follow you on those 5,000 shillings. In fact, next time you're not going to fail because I'll follow you on that. I'll send you an invoice. So the journey will begin after you graduate. I don't want you sitting with that certificate saying, okay, I've done the course. I'm an incubate right now and telling people I did the course in writing. I want to see now action. This time, I also want to see people going out and exploring opportunities. Sam Jim, I hope you are somewhere there listening. You yes, sit at BNI uh, meetings. I want you to explore also writing, be it business writing on those these things, proposal. Let me know. just do go for these opportunities. 
look for opportunities. Come to me, ask me, Patricia, do we have any opportunities? Sometimes I have opportunities and uh, you might not be able to get them. I want you people, because if you keep quiet, then I won't be able to follow up on a thousand people at a go. But if you actually come to me and tell me, hey, you have to. Because at one point I would want to see all of you just publishing books or doing some, if you are a performer, you are performing. If you are writing songs, you are writing songs. The goal that you entered with in this class, I want to see it accomplished. Because if you accomplish it, then Patricia has accomplished something. I'll be proud, I'll be happy that uh, Fibian or Marianne or Ian or Jasper they have accomplished something. Each and everybody of you has now to work. You're going to create time and you're going to work towards that goal you had when you joined this class. So it's, it's going to be a tough journey, but it's going to be a very interesting journey. So if you have any question, please send it to me. I think we should be now finishing the class. Uh, if you didn't understand anything, my phone number is always open for questions. My WhatsApp is always open for questions. You're free to ask me any question. Gabriel, do you have anything to add on? Patricia. Yes. I was just wondering, maybe one of us does not have a growth partner because I'm hanging loose. So in case there's one, yeah. Mm -hmm. The one who doesn't have a growth partner. Yes. I think nobody has picked their growth partners yet. Oh, they have okay. to. Okay. Uh, they have to pick by Wednesday. Wednesday, I need the growth partner. As we as we we making the certificates, I need to know if you have a growth partner, because you're not going to receive that certificate without the growth partner. So you have to actually now approach everybody in the class, the people you feel like they can be your growth partner. Sometimes we say they should be the same gender, but yeah, we leave it to you to decide. I feel like there's no question, but should there be any question, uh, you people can reach out to me and I'll be able to help. If you need some clarification, we'll, you can just reach out to me and I'll be able to help. Uh, for now, we're going to end the class because of time. Uh, Fibian is preparing for um, Ecclesia. So you can just create time. There's no question at this point, we should end the meeting, right? So I have just one tiny question. Um, are we going to still maintain the same WhatsApp group for the rest of the year or it's going to be disbanded? So you'll remain with the WhatsApp group, the one for the class. You remain with that one. Then there is another group you're going to get into. It's called the Incubates group. So you'll meet other people over there. You'll meet the other incubates over there. So and Patricia, then that's where you, yes. You, you have, have you said that the growth partner should be the same gender as you are? We, so I should pick a female growth partner. Yeah, we always advise that, but uh, it's mostly up to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>
this class might be having some are we balanced in the gender ah uh, the thing is you know at some point i have very few uh, the the girls I've, i've had so many girls graduating uh, and then the last oh. class i think i had a lot of uh, a lot of uh, this class is a lot of girls the other class had a lot of boys ah uh, yeah And Patricia, is this our last class? Yes. So we are going to have another class. Oh, so no. I have to, uh, next week is graduation day. So you can bring someone else in graduation and please put on nicely and put your camera on. Buy safari <laughs> <com> bundles. <laughs> If you want to put on a tie, put on a tie. Just be presentable. All of you, put your camera on. Bring somebody else, a date on somebody. Just bring them. We want to see the now the family. Uh, also in that class, in that uh, graduation, you'll see all our um, our trainers will come, and um, uh, uh, what else? Uh, the other incubators will be your day, so don't worry. It's going to be your day. So next week we want to see the faces of each and everybody here. And, oh, and, uh, try to put on a shirt eh nice shirts eh? put on those nice shirts that you've been keeping for forever you never know you might land a husband or a wife here those who are like <laughs> good for you <laughs> <laughs> so That's it for today. I'm going to see you next week when you're looking so good and then we'll decide on how to pick how to go around this one. One more question Patricia. Yes. Yeah. Uh we are graduating via Zoom, yeah? <laughs> yes. We are. Via yes, Zoom. yes, unfortunately that one via Zoom unfortunately. If it weren't for this corona and everything we would be at Strathmore taking some photos and putting on our our very nice graduation what are they called those like mm -hmm. tie things Yeah I was thinking of the same I think the cast has been uplifted because of that I think our class would have some uh meet up some 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 days or some some Yeah months. yeah <laughs> Yeah, some them. months to come we all are going to meet. Yes, yeah, some months to come we'll all have a fireplace meeting at mm -hmm. Strathmore University and then you can meet each other. Okay. We'll also do the, organi the the organizing of this one. So Gabriel, if you have anything we are ending the meeting. Uh, well, Patricia, I thank you very much for the guy for the guidance regarding the the way forward. So maybe I don't know if I could have missed it. If, have you reminded them to prepare their graduation speeches for next week? Oh, and graduation speeches. I just told them to put on presentably so that they can get a wife or a husband. I forgot about that one. <laughs> ah, okay. So maybe <laughs> This is to all of us you just you, you can just prepare graduation speech uh, we will have three minutes each of us to just share maybe just a brief of what you learned during the time uh, and probably your readiness to to start the writing journey you know just a, a short graduation speech I saw last 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 time some people wrote it so if you choose that route that's fine. Uh, you can write it and also just come to recite it i saw last time also people were very poetic yeah so uh, uh, a graduation speech because that is your day and then uh, for the, the let's say the presentations that we had today or if you wrote your writing journey you know we would just love to share them with patricia then we just put them under your name under your account or under your name so if you could just share the things you wrote today uh and also prepare graduation speech that's all from me oh and um before we go you can also share a photo of yourself uh 
not really a selfie. If you have that photo that look uh, presentable so that I can put it for those people graduating, you always have it somewhere. Your name and what you are doing. Yeah, so you can just share like a small profile of yourself and a photo. It will help us when we are making the graduation uh, list. When we say uh, it's Felix who is going to present now, we put your name over there and people can read about you as you do the presentation. That one will be in WhatsApp. I'm going to WhatsApp each and everybody on Monday and yeah. remind you about that. All right, all right. Now that I feel like there's no question anymore, I should let you people go and have lunch. Patricia, um, just one more thing, kindly. Yeah. Yes, everyone, I welcome you to my afternoon ecclesia. It's about poetry, and we are going to listen to those sweet voices across East Africa. Tisa mpaka sa kumina moja. Aya, nyinyi wote mekaribisho sana kwa Swahili session with Fibian, Malenga Mlezi. What was Swahili? Even you. I have never seen you in my class here, by the way. <laughs> Don't worry. Next time I'll be talking very good Kiswahili. It's only the Zulu that has affected me this much. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm learning. All right. Hi, Asante Nisana. Thank you for your patience and thank you for being very nice students. Uh, it's been it's been an honor being your administrator. Hope this one year can you collect a speed so that I see who to put in black book and stuff like that. Continue writing. Go out to the world and write. Aya, situonane next week mkika smart. Aya, goodbye. Bye.